So after the sack of Thompson a moment ago, we make our way to the fourth quarter. This will be a 28-yard field goal try by Garrett Hartley, who's already hit from 31 yards out tonight. He's only missed once all year. In the back of your mind, you wonder if Bob Stoops thinks about faking one with his reputation. We'll take the points right down the can off the foot of Hartley. The largest Tostitos Fiesta Ball deficit ever overcome, 14 points, twice it's happened. Last in 1988, when Florida State roared back to beat Nebraska 31 to 28. Terry, of course, legendary coach at UCLA, and Pat Hayden, the quarterback at USC. No, what, what Pat Hayden's saying is, we beat, you at, we beat UCLA when I was a quarterback. Terry Donahue is saying, well, when I was there, we lost like our first four. We roared back and, and won that series. So both of them have a lot to claim in that, in that relationship. Oh, and by the way, Vaskersian might be the tiebreaker there. He went to SC. Oh, well, it's tough. To, it's a tough booth then for Coach Donahue. Oh, yeah. He's a little tilted on him, isn't it? Get a look at the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl trophy. Eight point spread with nearly the entire quarter to go. Sean Scott from the goal line. A good return out to the 28. We opened tonight asking, could again David take down the line? Ian Johnson into the secondary out to the 32 yard line. But a quiet night for Johnson. 13 carries, 43 yards. It'll be very interesting to see how Boise State offense reacts. They need, they can't tuck their heads. Can't, they've got to come out. They've got to make some things happen. The off, the, the momentum is with Oklahoma right now. Coming up to line to scrimmage quickly. quickly. Second down handoff to Johnson. And he breaks it to the outside. And that's good enough for a first down. That is the first first down in the second half for the Boise State offense. We spent time in Boise, in Boise, Idaho, visiting with this ball club. We've talked with enough people, pro scouts, coaches. What's the one word they use about Ian Johnson most often besides tough? Because he's all of that, patient. He's a very patient runner. He waits, he reads the blocks, he lets his linemen get out ahead of him, and then when he sees a hole, he bursts through it. I just saw that on that 14-yard game. How many game. times have we seen him come out of the pile yeah. and come shooting out the back end? Sometimes you lose sight of him, and then here he comes. Timeout going to be called by Zabranski. Well, to finish that story about Ian Johnson being tough, Broke his ribs, punctured his lung, stayed in the game. He spent five nights in a hospital in San Jose. Fourth quarter just underway. First down for Boise State. They pitch it to the far side to Johnson, looking for some daylight, and is able to push forward and pick up a gain of three, maybe four. Let's send it downstairs once again to Chris Myers. Well, Todd, you guys were talking about the toughness and patience of Ian Johnson. He's been teased, the story well documented, his mom recommending he crochet, knit caps uh, as a way to relax, which he has done. He, he says his toughness, you know, his father's a firefighter, and he, he thinks people that think he got his toughness there, but he said, my mom's a social worker, and if you watch what she does, I get my toughness from her. That's a very difficult job. They hustle to the line of scrimmage. And the throw is too high for Benny Perrino. And it's a lateral. I believe that's a lateral, so they will lose yardage on this play because I saw the linesman immediately stand there and thrust his arm out, you know, away from his body towards the end zone. Well, they hurried up to the line of scrimmage trying to keep, uh, you know, Oklahoma off balance. What you can see with all the different formations and shifting on the prior play, Nick Harris Got, got there just before the snap. Yes. They had three receivers. They try to out leverage the defense and get the pitch. He got there. Now they try to do it before the, before Oklahoma could, could adjust. Loss of four, third and 13. Zabransky steps up and he can run. But he is hammered to the turf by Rufus Alexander. <laughs> That's impressive. Open field tackle. It's like a form tackle. It, it, it's an absolutely perfect tackle, but it brings to mind the scouting report on Jared Zabransky. He's one of the three fastest players on the Boise State team. 
but he never makes people miss. Straight from the coaching staff, rarely makes people miss. Well, it's hard to make Rufus Alexander miss anyway. <laughs> That's why he's the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. I was going to say, if there's one cat you want to make yeah. miss, it's Rufus yeah. Alexander. That was like and, a heat-seeking missile. And, right not, and not many people <laughs> allow him to miss. That's for sure. Springer puts a foot on it. And Smith calls for a fair catch all the way back to the floor. And Coach Alvarez has gripped his team together. <laughs> Never, oh, yeah, coach. never, never step back behind the 10 yard line. Ever. Hunt him out. <laughs> Time for our board game summary. Boise State jumped in front. 14 0. 49 yard touchdown to Dryson James after an Oklahoma turnover. Ian Johnson a touchdown. And after building an 18 point lead, a special teams break for Oklahoma. Capped off by an Adrian Peterson touchdown. They've added a field goal since to chop 10 points off what was an 18 point advantage. You have to think the Boise State defense has been on the field a lot in the second half. Can Oklahoma continue to try and wear them down and have those three yard runs become bigger? Oh my, Dennis Ellis, say hello to Adrian Peterson. Not going to wear down anyone like that. Great job by Dennis Ellis. Defeating the block by George Duke Robinson. So you want to be a football player? Are you sure? Check this out. Wow, that's how it's supposed to be done. Defeat the offensive line. It'll look tired and worn out to me. Coach, that was a training film tackle right there. Loss of one, second and 11. Thompson out of his own end zone. And broken up in the secondary by Alexander. Jarred and loose from Joe John Finley. Well, you can't say enough. Whether they win this game or lose this game, Boise State University is proving to Oklahoma and the rest of the country, for those of us that ask the question, can they run with the big dogs, they are running and perhaps running away setting, from the big dog. They're setting the pace. They jumped off the porch ahead of the big dog. I'm going to tell you, they're not backing away from anyone. No. And I, I, I'm, I'm surprised how they've reacted. I'm surprised. It's late. In the, it's middle of the fourth quarter. And we've talked about 10 they last four quarters. They're pretty fresh to me. Thompson carries and is tripped up by David Shields. And Oklahoma will punt out of its own end zone. What a stop by the Broncos. And Bob Stoops is living. See, now you go back to the punter. Kyle Stringer and the great job he's done tonight. He set all of this up with that last tremendous punt. And of course, catching the ball on the four or five yard line doesn't that help. help. But that now help. he's helping change field position. He's tilted it in favor of Boise State. You've noticed most of his punts, very high punts, a lot of hang time, all of them near the boundary. You're, they're really pinning the pinning the ball in there, so there's really no place to run anyhow. Well, he's he's done a great job. Do you go after it right here or do you want the football? Going to get good field position. Looks like they're going after it. Good punt here by Michael Cohen. This is Tadman from his own 40. Crosses midfield, and he was shellacked by Lewis Bacon. I tell you guys, if you love football, you love what you've just seen. They're hitting on both sides. The game's physical. The game's on the line. You've got two teams that are really competing, and they're getting after it. Uh, Barry Alvarez and Charles Davis are banging one another up here in the booth. Let's cool things off a minute. Ooh. Aerial coverage of tonight's Tostitos Fiesta Bowl from the University of Phoenix Stadium in Glendale, Arizona, is brought to you by Budweiser. Brand new facility about 10 miles north of downtown Phoenix, gorgeous. Arizona. Just gorgeous. Hey, with this field position, why not take a shot? They haven't gotten much done offensively this half. Why not go after it? They're going to hand it to Ian Johnson. And he breaks through the initial defensive front of Oklahoma and carries it down to the 44 yard line. You know, in this half, what's Boise the, before this this drive? Four possessions. They punted it four times. The points they got, the interception returned for a touchdown yep. by Marty Tadman. 
I'm looking at this field position here and the way Kyle Stringer's punting the ball. Even if you get stuffed, you got great, you're going to put Oklahoma in the hole. This is why I would go ahead and try and get something big on them right now. Watch number nine, the top of your screen. They have some plays called for him tonight, though. They're going to hand it to Ian Johnson. And he has perhaps enough yardage inside the 40, needed to get to the 39. Ian Johnson came in second only to Garrett Wolf in yards rushing per game. Been pretty quiet for Johnson, but they're staying with him, and why not? 16 carries, 64 yards. In eight games this season, they gave him the ball 20 or more times. Durable, tough, strong, late. And he loves the bright lights of national television. Their biggest TV games, 715 yards and 14 touchdowns scored this year. Going to get it again. He plows ahead inside the 35-yard line. Chris Myers talked a moment ago. What, what a delightful kid. Ian Johnson is. Uh, grew up just outside of Los Angeles in San Dimas, California. Went to Damien High School. Hard to believe in Southern California that some of the quote unquote big boys didn't come knocking on the door of Ian Johnson. He doesn't have he didn't have the measurables, maybe some of them were looking for, but he talked about it earlier in our ball game. We had that great sound bite, you know, about measuring heart and yep. understanding that. Well, we're seeing the evidence of it from Ian Johnson, and we've seen it all year long. You're going to keep seeing, seeing him get the ball until he stopped. Hard to bring him down. And is that ball loose? On the far side. Yes, it is. Oklahoma has recovered. Rufus Alexander stripped it away, and Curtis Lofton covered it up. Wow. It's off. Big players, great players, play big in games like this. They make the plays that you need to give you an opportunity. There's Alexander, Alexander. 42. See how the ball, ball ripping, ripping. He pulled it out before Johnson was down. Lofton alertly jumps on it. Oklahoma in business and now not in the shadow of their own end zone. Trying to fight for it. Fight for a couple extra yards, finish a run, expose the ball. That's a strong man, Rufus Alexander. Yeah, he did a great job digging and digging while also securing the tackle. So now Oklahoma gets the football back. 8.30 to play here in Glendale. Now the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, and the Sooners trail 28-20. Peterson spins out of one tackle and brings it out to the 33. Colt Brooks drags him down a gain of four. You can see there's nothing clean inside. And Peterson's fighting, I'm telling you, he's trying to finish every run. But we saw earlier, it's outside is where there's some things loose. So Get, what you're thinking is more, more stretch, more stretch runs, plays. Stretch rather than plays up and on the run. Plays. And the stretch play, that long outside handoff, running it to the outside numbers, right? To the outside of your offensive tackles and looking to find the gap and get upfield. Under eight to go. Oklahoma has all three timeouts remaining. Play action. Peterson. Pump fake. Rolls. And picks up a first down out to the 40. Very nicely done by Thompson. He took a look. He took a look at took all, a number of his, looks. all of his choices. He made a good decision. There's nothing there. Use your feet. Pull that ball down and run. So this tells me there was good coverage downfield because he was well protected with plenty of time to throw a ball in rhythm. But because he had nowhere to go with it because of the coverage downfield, he alertly tucked it away at the end of that and ran upfield. Got a nice block from Adrian Peterson on the corner. Allowed him to get out of bounds upfield. Finley in motion. Peterson a carry. Nowhere to go. I'll tell you what, these guys up front from Boise State, that defensive front is penetrating so well that there is no room for the running backs right now. Doesn't matter if it's Peterson or Alan Patrick, they are getting upfield and creating havoc. You'll never see the end of the the end of the defense knocked off. You never see a dent in the defense. They're always up the field penetrating. And always have the proper leverage. That's what you know, that's what I see. Everyone's fitted in the right gaps with the proper arm free and no place to go. Down to seven minutes. A second and 11 for the Sooners. Quick throw to Johnson. And he has tackled good open field tackle out of the 45 yard line made by Kyle Wilson. Boy, if he beats Wilson, he's off to the races. 
You know, this is an interesting call here, Coach, because earlier in the game, I was talking about four down territory, and then when it came up fourth and two, they ended up hunting the football. You may be or, four or down territory. You've got six minutes left, yes. Charles. You've got six minutes left. It depends on what you have here. Bobby Stoops is a gambler. That's, why, that's a gambler. what I'm thinking. Third and four. Long ball and too long. For Quentin Cheney, he had beat the defender. If that ball's on the money, Oklahoma's going for two. Ball sailed on him a little bit. And actually, there was no, not, to me, there wasn't enough air in this one. To me, it's much more of a flat throw instead of air that gives him a chance to run into, run under it. He threw a flat and long instead of a little bit of loft. So a 6-10 to play, Bob Stoops has decided, at least for the time being, to punt. But you never know with Bob Stoops. He's going to put it on his defense. But if you're Boise State, you play what we call punt safe. You see, you're lined up, you're alert for any type of a fake. You don't care about him punting the ball. You just don't want him faking it. He is going to punt it. Beautiful hang time here. Tadman will let it go and into the end zone. 6 0 1 to play at the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Can Boise State? Now drive the dagger into the OU defense and put this game away. At the start of the game, Tom Brenneman talked about the big man for the little school at Boise State, Lyle Smith. Now late in the stages of this game, a big upset possibly in the making for the Broncos. So big that the governor who played for Lyle, Butch Otter sworn in earlier today took a plane here to the game to be on the sideline and root for the Broncos and hopes as he called it the biggest thing to hit Idaho since the potato that his team could hold on Tom and the son of a potato farmer Jared Zabransky who grew up just across the border in Oregon is trying to lead Boise State to what would be a monumental upset of Oklahoma. But first things first. Tackle made by Lundy Holmes on the first down carry by Ian Johnson. I'll tell you the one thing that Boise State has to watch and they can do right now. You've got a timeout, Oklahoma, but they've got to milk the 25 second clock. The last series, they were snapping the ball with 15 seconds on the clock. If you manage the clock properly, you've got an eight point lead. If you manage it properly, snap the ball with less than five seconds, you take a series away from your opponent. I think I think they also can't get too conservative in what they're doing too, because I don't think that Oklahoma is going to allow them to just run the clock out. I think we just saw Lendy Holmes coming in from the corner position. They're going to come after him right now. I think they've got to make some plays and get some first downs. Tom, earlier we showed those giant showed the giant killer video of Louisville taking out Alabama here in the Fiesta Bowl. Louisville is no longer that type of a team. They're more of a bully. Wake Forest fits that definition. Wake Forest and Boise State together is a heck of a banquet, isn't it? It's going to be fun tomorrow night. We'll keep it right here on Fox. Adrian Peterson, is he down to the final five and a half minutes of his brilliant Oklahoma career? Boise State trying to give their first year head coach Chris Peterson a perfect season and a stunning upset in this Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Can the OU defense stop Sobranski and company? Second down and 10, he will throw it. And backing in. To the sideline is the wide receiver Rab. You scratch your head. <laughs> he lost where he was. He didn't realize where he was. Had his back to the to the to the boundary. Thought somebody was on his back. And his off in the offensive line for Jared Zabransky did another terrific job picking up the blitz. We're down to third and one. See if he had field awareness. That's a first down for Boise State in a few more yards. But since he didn't, it now creates a third and one. But again, the Boise State offensive line has done a great job all night long. Well, now they snap the ball with 10 on the clock. So Bransky going to roll. How about the call on the first down conversion? Great call, and they find the tight end, Derek Schumann, for a first down. In the first half, I was wrong about what I thought Boise State would do. I feel like I'm a little bit better rhythm myself this half because they ran up it and snapped the ball. Great call, right? 
But what did I say? They can't go so conservative and just hand it back to Oklahoma. Too much time left on the clock. Run your offense, run the things that have been successful. You know, Tom, you say, great call. It was great execution. The call, never, it's always execution. <laughs> Well said, Coach. Well yeah, said. You don't, if you don't execute, everybody's going, what are you, what are you dummy, crazy throwing the ball? Throwing the ball? <laughs> We're at the five-minute mark, and they'll keep it on the ground to Ian Johnson, and he breaks into the open field. And Johnson out to the 47. A 15-yard run for the sophomore. Can't say enough about this offensive line. I mean, look at the holes. Look at the guy. There's Tad Miller, 66, coming around. Daly, 69. On the right side, Cavender, 64. Andrew Woodruff, they nicknamed him Psycho, number 60. Chopping big holes in the defensive front of Oklahoma. And look for a lot of blitzing coming from Brett Venables in the Oklahoma defense. So there could still be more big runs there if they pop the first level. First down, we're down to 430 left. Oklahoma with two timeouts remaining. Stay on the ground with Johnson. And he picks up a yard. Johnson in, closing in on 100 yards tonight. Now at 95. Our overhead shots of tonight's Tostitos Fiesta Bowl provided by the DLP Ultimate Picture Cam. It's the best camera in football. DLP is the official HD TV of the BCS on Fox. DLP, it's amazing. It's the mirrors, and it doesn't get much better than that. I'd like to have that at home. Watch the rest of the bowl games. Well, you own Wisconsin. I'm surprised you don't. <laughs> and by the way, congratulations uh, of your Badgers and the man you handpicked to take your place, Brett Bielema, who won or lost games. only one time. Like Twelve wins. Twelve wins, joining Larry Coker and Chris, Chris, Chris Peterson. Peterson. Chris Pearson got he's 12 and 0 right 12 now. 12 wins this season. So congratulations to the Badgers. Well, they played they played great. I talked to Brett afterwards. And, Congratulate him. He said, Coach, we didn't play very well. I said, Oh, Brett, <laughs> you won the game. Yeah, Don't let's, worry let's about not that. get into that. <laughs> Go relax. Go have some fun and celebrate. You well, know what a great year. A terrific year. And, and again, my congratulations also. But as I look at this ball game, the thing that has probably impressed me the most about Boise State and how they played this game is there has not been a lot of trickery in terms of getting it done. You often think about the, the you know, David and Goliath games and you've got to fool them all the time and run reverses and fakes and all this other stuff. They've really gone toe to toe all night with Oklahoma and gotten them running their regular offense. Second down and nine. Oklahoma with one timeout remaining. Got to protect the ball here. Boise State cannot turn over the football in this situation. That's Oklahoma's best hope. Can you believe this? Oklahoma is calling a timeout. Brent Venables almost looking with a question expression. Third and final. That is their final timeout. Can you believe that? Goodness. Well, Bob Stoops is really upset on that Oklahoma sideline. They just burned their final timeout. What happened here? Well, they broke the huddle with 12 players. Bob Stoops is saying that's a penalty. They, Oklahoma has the wrong personnel grouping in the game, but he saw it with the, when the 12th guy went off. He wants a penalty. See, they got one earlier in the ball game. Remember, illegal substitution. They had a five-yard penalty. He wants another one here in this situation. If in his estimation, the officials missed that one. The official said didn't happen. Been a rough night for the 46 year old from Youngstown, Ohio. Oklahoma coming in. I mean, he had it ready to play. There's no question. You brought it up earlier, right from the start, Charles. They were not in any way, shape, or form overlooking Boise State. Give the credit to Boise State. They have shown up in the desert to play tonight. I'll tell you what, this Cinderella title for all these teams coming out, Utah pounded Pitt in this bowl game a couple of years ago. The Cinderella thing's starting to go. Go the way of the books, isn't it? Safe handoff. Fake handoff. And Zabransky is going to burn some time. Oklahoma now out of timeout. They can't stop it. All right, now what about on this third and nine call? He's got to throw the football. He's got to throw the football. Uh, you've got a punter that's been dropping the ball inside the 10 yard line all day. They're going to have, Oklahoma's going to have to drop, drive the ball 90 yards. You want to throw the football and try to keep, just keep, Keep the ball. See if you can't move the chains one more time. And with the punter they have, I would really think hard about trying to get something big on the outside. 
I, I know you you don't want to hold the ball too long back there but maybe you take a shot with one of those big receivers outside and really try and make it work here. The Bransky to throw. Now he'll step up and he is locked at the 44 yard line. 25 second play clock has not started yet. And by the time it does so for whatever reason it's not running right now we're going to be under three minutes in this game. And the game and the game clock continues to roll. Boise State people, it can't roll fast enough. Boise sitting there, uh, Oklahoma saying, why hasn't that clock started? And it's a great question, isn't it? Because how much time ran off? I'm counting somewhere close 10 to 15 yep. seconds. It ran off before the play clock began that Boise State's going to gain because they won't snap this ball till two, three seconds on the, uh, the clock. Oklahoma with two block kicks this season. 20 under Bob Stoops since he took over. They're not going to get to this one. They snapped it with two on the, on the play clock. Smith, the fair catch. So Oklahoma, the 23 yard line, has two minutes and 40 seconds left. Trailing by eight. Ball tops it out of the shotgun. Throw and a catch is made by Cheney out to the 35. The clock will stop until they reset the chains. Gain of 12. This is where Oklahoma has to huddle. Hustle. Get on the ball. Get ready. When that clock cranks, when the official blows the whistle, you want the ball snapped. You don't want to lose any seconds. Let's see how well they do with that. Catch Manuel Johnson. Up to midfield and crosses midfield to the 47 yard line. Clock continuing to run. And another first down and a Boise State play. We have two players limping for Boise State, one of them being Orlando Scandrick, mm. their best cover guy. That means Austin Smith, number 37, goes into the ball game and he's cold. Coach, I don't know about you, but I find the new guy right away. That's what, that's what I'm saying right now. If you're up in the box for Oklahoma, you're signaling that we got to challenge him right now. We've got to go after the new one. Kyle Wilson was also limping after the play, number 22, the other starting corner. Well, they're going to get Skandrick off the field and get right back to playing. Quentin Jones has come in on the far side along with Tristan, or along with Austin Smith, as you mentioned, Charles. There's Smith, number 37. Will they come after him? The answer is yes. He's playing a soft corner, giving a lot of cushion. He gave about a 12 yard cushion right there. Just an easy throw and catch. Remember, Quentin Jones was the starter when the season began, but lost his job to Kyle Wilson. Austin Smith hasn't been the starter, but I will tell you this in practice the other day when they were in pads, he hit Ian Johnson on a running play, almost started a little bit of a dispute between Ian and himself. <laughs> Chris Peterson was after him. <laughs> 2.06 to go. I would find him in, in, in coverage, though, and try and work him. He's rolled up. He's playing tight coverage. He's got a little help over the top. Ball of the 39. Thompson across the middle. Iglesias inside the 30. Tip goes out of bounds to the 22. Two minutes remaining. That is a gain of 16. Thompson taking him right down the field. But remember, they need a touchdown and the two point conversion. Thompson showing a lot of composure, seeing the field. Now, that Boise front has to be tired. This is where you tire out a defensive front. No huddle. Hurry to the ball. I thought you said they were awfully fresh. I mean, when did they get tired here? When did that happen? The no huddle. Oh, yeah, you're right. No huddle. <laughs> they're going to bring five. Looks like they're going to bring five. There's that big freshman tight end, Gresham. I haven't found him at all tonight. Thompson breaks a tackle from Browning. And gets it down to the 15. Plenty of time here. There's a minute 50 to go. They're at the 15 yard line. They're out of timeouts, but they'll get up to the line of scrimmage. And I say, hurry, I mean, get off the ground. You've got to get off the ground, get your people lined up. Thompson makes his call. See, Boise State just substituted in a defensive lineman trying to get some fresh legs. Ian Smart. Thompson on the slant. And a flag comes in. And there's a man you talked about a moment ago. Lost his job as a starter earlier this season. Quentin Jones. Listen, I don't know everything about football. 
And I remember a coach telling me a long time ago as we listed Pass Bill interference, Bill. defense, number 23. Spot foul, automatic, first down. Watch, he's going to be he's going to be hugged up by the receiver. There's Jones getting there a little early, trying to get to play through the man to get to the ball. But that coach told me if a, if a guy comes into the game, you test him early because otherwise he would have been on the field to begin with if he was as good as the guy who was out there. Check him out. Jones is now off as they bring in an extra lineman up front for Boise State figuring Oklahoma will throw first and goal from the five a minute 30 to go Oklahoma needing a touchdown and a two point conversion to time. See how they're playing off. They won't retreat from that goal line to the end zone tipped caught by Cheney. Wow. Touchdown Oklahoma. Now they have to go and get two. They have tried one point two point conversion this season and it failed. It's very difficult to find a hole as you drop that many people in that short a distance. The, the field is restricted but he squeezed that in there. Excellent vision. It's a tip drill. And this the time tipped and this time the receiver <laughs> won the tip drill. Boy look at Chris Peterson egging his team on a sooner fan. Oh, this is tough. Sooners, stand to watch. Sooners having trouble with personnel the running trying to get the right personnel in the ball game, and they don't have a timeout to spend right now. The second guy has run off the field again. Now they have their guys. I have to use Paul Thompson and his legs to challenge the corner run pass option. Thompson jump ball to the corner and a flag comes down on Scandrick who's back in the game. He got tied up with Cheney. Ball now guys if this is interference this ball's got to go down to the one and a half right or does it go to the one. Normally it's the two when the ball's out in the field but it's two That's point interference, conversion. Defense number eight. We're still on the try. Half the distance. So it's half the distance balls on the balls on the one yard line. It's a good call. So it's, it's a, a little, good so call. Half, a little half and a little bit more. Now, now, do you come back inside and hand it off to the horse, you or do you still to. see? To me, I'm still trying to run pass option with my quarterback. I want extra options. Coach, what are you doing? I gotta go run pass option. Give the quarterback a chance. Three tight end set. Adrian Peterson in the eye. Gresham on the jump ball to the end zone. He did he get it? There's a flag down. Still no signal given by the official. There is a flag on the play. It's going to be interesting because Gresham was the motion man over there, splitting wide. They tried to use him to isolate by formation a mismatch, which they did. Let's see what the flag is, though. Was he not set? Charles? Could be. Could be. Illegal shift. Offense. Two men moving without reset. Five yard penalty. Still on the try. The call. Holy mackerel. The, the call was excellent. Watch Gresham. There's the motion by Finley and there goes the motion by Gresham 18 19 and 18 the two tight ends in motion. I love the call in terms of isolating him on the linebacker and now they've got a big one. Schleck away come racing off the field. They put in an extra defensive back. The ball now spotted at the seven yard line. This is the game. This is it. Still say they've got to get Thompson out of the pocket where he's on the move. Pump fake. Thompson to the end zone. Catch is made and we're tied at 28 by Joaquin Iglesias. What an unbelievable drive led by the senior Paul Thompson. They try to throw another fade. But good awareness by Thompson and patience to find open receiver. This, the numbers of Paul Thompson on this drive, guys. Five for five, 66 yards. Reminds you of the 99-yard drive against Nebraska, the Big 12 title game, where he was six of eight on that drive and led them downfield for a touchdown. Well, when they were down by 18, both of you guys said, in our amount of time this week with Bob Stoops and the Oklahoma staff, character, the number one word repeated over and over and over again about Paul Thompson. Well, as we said it earlier, but this is about expectations. Oklahoma expects to win. 
no one panicked on the drive. You saw Thompson, who's been struggling during the day. He's had some issues. Takes him straight down the field. No, everyone kept their composure, made plays when they had to, and overcame a penalty. I know one thing. You and I are both fired as play callers because we kept calling that <laughs> run pass option, and they wanted to stay in the pocket, and it worked for them. But, but watch, coaches, you called it. He wanted to throw a fade here because what they ran was Cheney on a slant and then go into the fade. He had to come to a second option, which was Joaquin Iglesias in the middle. Since 1999, these are the two winningest programs in all of college football. The senior quarterback who went the circuitous route to get that starting job back, Paul Thompson, has done his part. Now can a three-year starter. A 32 and 5 record as a starter. Jared Zabransky, can he get his team down the field to win it? Look at the catch by Iglesias going down to secure the catch and making sure that he had his arms underneath it. I think they're taking a look at it, but from my, in, in my estimation, no. that's a good catch. They're ready to kick this thing off. So here we go. 126 to play. Boise has two timeouts. And that ball three yards deep into the end zone, and this is Quentin Jones to bring it out. Out across the 20 to the 25. Tonight's All-State good hands play of the game. You just saw it. On their third try for the two-point conversion after a couple of penalties. <laughs> Finding Iglesias, who's had a monster night, over 100 yards receiving, 120 to be exact. And they got it three times they had to go, and the odds of getting a two-point conversion are well below 50%. And they had to do it three times and convert it. Clock is running. They've set the ball, and Zabransky a dangerous throw! And it's intercepted! Into the end zone, Marcus Walker! Unbelievable. Look at it. Zabransky, I guess, expecting what Charles, a receiver, to break to the sideline. He, he thought he was going to the sideline and he threw the ball on a timing route without really seeing the seeing the break of the defensive back. The receiver continues upfield. Does Walker stay in bounds? Is the question right now. Boise State praying that he did not, but it appears that the tightrope walking of Marcus Walker is going to pay off for Oklahoma. Walker took over as a starter at cornerback the fourth game of the season. Last year had a pair of surgeries, one on each shoulder. Played only seven games. Can we all agree coming into this game, one of the questions was would Jared Zabransky play within himself, not make the crucial mistakes that we saw him make at Georgia to open the 2005 season? Up into that throw. So the play's upheld. Touchdown. So up until that throw, he overall, he had, he had about one other bad one with the sack. But overall, what a heartbreaker for that senior. Well, you, you, you question him, his thought of throwing one hash, an out cut. If, regardless of whether the receiver made the, the proper cut or not, if they ran the proper route, he's throwing from a far hash mark, an out cut on the other, on the, on the other boundary. That's a lot of exposure. This game's not over yet. There's still a minute two remaining. 28 to 10. Boise State led it at the 8.05 mark of the third quarter. Oklahoma, 25 unanswered points since then. You, you know, an expression comes to mind that may seem somewhat trite at this moment. But after you quoted all those stats, Tom, for Oklahoma, been there, done that. Here they are. You know, the last kickoff, I thought that thing might come out. Yeah. It was blocked pretty well. 
He was close. He's about one guy from popping it. Ball's being kicked about one yard. If he can get another yard, they take a knee. If you're Oklahoma, you have to cover all the way through because I don't think the young man back there, Quentin Jones, has much of a mind to put a knee down in the end zone. No. Jones, two yards deep, will bring it out again. He's out to the 22-yard line. We have 54 seconds, but again, a reminder, once they set the ball, the play clock will start, so Boise State needs to get out onto the field. And over the ball. Once the official sets the chains, you'll see him crank it. Here goes the clock. New rule. And Tom, you brought up a great point. This isn't over. Jared Zabraski actually gets a chance for redemption on this last drive. Still good to have a senior pulling the trigger for you. Block running at 50 seconds. Zabranski. Steps up looking down the field, fires, and it's caught by the tight end Schumann trying to get out of bounds. He's to the 43. Clock stops, though. It's a first down. So hustle up and get on the line of scrimmage. They can spike the ball if they so choose here. It's a gain of 36. They do have two timeouts left. So Bransky has them ready. They're showing a lot of poise in this situation, too, aren't they? Zabranski, down he goes into the arms of Larry Verdine, and they're going to have to call the timeout. Loss of eight, 30 seconds remain. Well, certainly three of the plays you look at in this game. Touchdown catch, the two point conversion, then the next offensive play from scrimmage, the interception by Walker, races into the end zone, giving Oklahoma its first lead of the game. And how about that play by Marcus Walker? Let me take you back a couple of years. They took a red shirt off of him late in the season, the 2004 season, because they were struggling at corner. He really helped save their year as a true freshman. Comes back his sophomore year, injured, beat up, as you articulated, Tom, two shoulder surgeries. He didn't play all that well. Came back this year with a vengeance, his second team all Big 12, and caps it off with that interception. So 30 seconds remain. What's Bob Stoops saying to his defense over there, Charles? I think what he's saying right now is we're going to play it a little bit looser to make sure we don't give up anything behind us, but at the same time, not so loose that we make it easy. I think they're still going to try and put pressure on Zabransky. So he's playing a quarter, four deep, each responsible for one quarter, quarter of, the of the field. Almost like the old Tom Landry umbrella defense. Three rushers. Second down at 18, Zabransky fires, and it is caught down at the 29. No, it came loose. It looked like James had it. And then it came squirting out of there. Boy, Zabransky thought he had it as well. But Lendy Holmes, number 11, the corner, had retreated all the way back so that he was underneath. And then Dar Darian Williams, number 41, actually breaks up the pass with the hit on Dryzen James, number 11. Oklahoma's trying to get some type of pressure with three, dropping everyone deep. Your four deep are getting as deep as they can. Wonder if they're going to bring a lot of underneath coach. help. Wonder if they'll end up bringing a fourth, showing a three look. Schumann racing on the field time. before the snap of the football. So Bransky fires into traffic and running a flag is Ram on Darian Williams, none thrown. Fourth down and 18 upcoming. For Boise State. So you've got your underneath linebackers dropping. They're 20 yards deep. You've got your quarters players, each of your secondary players. They're deeper. Nobody's going to get behind them. No one's going to get behind, and you're trying to flood the zones to make it tougher for those receivers to find gaps. They need to get to the Oklahoma 32 to move the chains. A last gasp for the Broncos. Bransky's legs might be critical here to save time on throwing the ball. Down the middle, James, the lateral! To the corner of the end zone! Can you believe that? I 
have seen it all. Now. The catch by James, the lateral, and that's a design play to Gerard Rabb, who races into the end zone, and now the point after to try and tie it in the final seconds. A fourth down and 18. Anthony Montgomery, and it is good. Well, it's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. And how about Jared Zabransky and his redemption after the interception, the hook and lateral, and it goes in. This is beautiful. Shades of Utah, Fiesta Bowl yep. 2004. Boy, is that, look at the execution. It's perfect. And look at Lewis Baker ran right by him because he wasn't expecting that at all. And Rab beats him to the corner. Boy, it doesn't get much better than that oh, right there. Listen, our colleague Jimmy Johnson working the work of the show with us. How about those Broncos? <laughs> unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. A fourth and 18. Charles, you said no trickery. No razzle dazzle. Until now. <laughs> but the old cliche about, you know, desperate times and desperate measures. And, desperate you know, measures. Fourth and 18, and Chris Peterson says, that's how we do it on the blue field in Boise every day during practice. We don't care if it's blue, green, wherever. This team is never one fit. Nope. All right. Line drive kick. This will be the final play of regulation. And boys and girls, we are on our way to overtime in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. 78 yards, five plays, a fourth and 18. They score in 55 seconds. Welcome to the BCS Bull Bash on Fox. And that's against a good defense. All right. Overtime rules. Each team given one possession from the opposition's 25. The leader after those possessions, it's not a sudden death here, each team gets a shot, is the winner. If the teams are tied, the process takes place and do it all over again until one team leads at the end of possessions. Make sure you understand that now. And after the second OT, teams must attempt a two-point conversion. Right, and the kicking game take goes out of it at that point. One other thing to keep in mind, you can score on defense. So if you are on defense first, most teams, when they win the toss, they choose to go on defense so they know what they have to match right. as you go along. But if you score on defense first, that's game over because you don't need an offensive possession then. You can even see the respect the players have for one another as the captains come out for this coin toss. Boise, you'll call a toss. The winner of the toss has the option to go on offense, defense, or one end of the field. We'll play that inning at the same end. Your choice? Tails. Tails, that's the blue side. It's come up tails. Boise, you've won the toss. You'll play defense first. All righty, Oklahoma will get it in the overtime. Here we go. We can go all day. We can go all day. Huh? Let's go, baby. The emotion, the spirit of college football. Let's see who can rally now. They've banged heads. They've gone at it. We've seen about everything. Now you come down to overtime. Yeah, the tough one for Oklahoma is they thought this thing was over. Yep. They thought it was done. Now they have to come back and continue to battle with a team that they thought they had finally put away. And Boise State says we're not going anywhere. Adrian Peterson in the backfield. Overtime is underway and Peterson with the football. Off to the left side. Down the sideline. 
Leaps, did he get in or step out of bounds? Touchdown, Adrian Peterson. That did not take long. That's what that's just, where, where was more of that stretch play earlier in the ball game with Adrian Peterson? I like him running that stretch play. I like him running uh, anything. Well, that, was, that was blocked very well. <laughs> it was blocked very well. But I tell you what, he's got a burst. He gets to that corner. There's a seam and he can get it. Left side, great hole. Inside, outside. Inside, outside. You had 72, Robinson, 79, Messmer. And then Cooper, number 50. And then look downfield. Nice block by Iglesias, number nine. And number 84, Cheney occupied enough of the DB to get into the end zone. Big point after. And it is good off the foot of Garrett Hartley. So one play, a 25-yard touchdown run by Adrian Peterson in overtime. His father celebrating. Can Boise answer? Chris Peterson in his first season as head coach took over for Dan Hawkins, of course, who assumed the head coaching duties at the University of Colorado. Five years as offensive coordinator under Coach Hawkins. Chris Peterson, his team down seven in overtime. Not that Benny pass. Perenna thought about throwing the football. He gets back to the line of scrimmage. He was going to throw that back to the quarterback. He showed it, you know, you have to tuck that ball. Give a good run fake first. Well defended by Oklahoma. They recognize it. And the throwback to the quarterback, I don't think, was going to end the sequence. I think it was going to come back to Zabransky, who was going to throw it back downfield. Ian Johnson standing on the sideline. Second down and ten. Zabransky out comes back the other way to the tight end Schumann got a couple of good blocks but at the end of the day it's only a gain of two a third Boise. down upcoming Boise has got a th their thought process now let's get a first down you have two shots let's get a first down and if I'm Brett Venables I'm thinking not blitzing here first two plays he is not blitzed He's trying to keep everything in front of him now if he had blitzed on that play I think that tight end screen works a lot better. So in this situation you might think about not coming after Zabransky and making him earn it. Third down and seven. Short drop Zabransky to Schumann and he bangs his way inside the 15 good enough for a first down. Ran right into Zach Latimer. Got love what Derek Schumann gives them as the tight end. There he is, number 91. He's going to come right into this zone in the middle, and find the dead zone, and then turn his shoulders. And coach, you talked earlier about being shoulder to shoulder, not turning so the guy can't split you. Schumann, the tight end, split the defenders that time for the first down. It's a well designed play. Clear the zone out, bring him underneath. Ball to the 13 yard line. First down, Boise State trailing by seven in the first overtime. And off to Peretta. He should be down back there unless his knee did not hit. I saw the referee coming in. I thought he was coming in to mark him down when he slid, taking the handoff. You know, they haven't been quote unquote cute the entire game until, until now until this overtime. Now. In the last play of the game, it carries over into overtime. We're seeing the whole playbook emptied by Boise State. See, I thought Peretta's knee had gone down on, on the handoff, and no one's challenging it, so it must not have. Down and eight for the Broncos at the Oklahoma 11. They're going to hand it off to Ian Johnson. Still on his feet, close to a first down inside the five to the four. Needed to get to about the three and a half. Like he's about a foot short. And remember, they have to match with a touchdown. Watch Ian Johnson. We talked about his patience and his toughness all night long. See, I reads it. It's one of the things the Oklahoma coaches told us about him is that he knows how to read blocks and read angles in the defenses, and that run put him over 100 yards for the evening. Third down and less than a yard. Ooh. 
Johnson denied the first down. Is the ball loose or was his knee down? I think they're saying he was down. They are saying I Hold believe down. he was down at the five and a half, six yard line. Ball being marked. Now we bring up a fourth down. Let's take a look at the play as Ian Johnson tries to run it inside. There's the initial hit as he's knocked back and he's stumbling, going. Ball no. came out before he went down. I think his knee was down. He thought he was down back I think there. His knees down first. Let's take right, a look. Look right look, here. Look, right there. Good call, coach. Yep. All right, here we go again. Now a timeout is called by Boise State. Much like the fourth and 18 in regulation. Down to one play. They got the touchdown on the razzle dazzle. Now it's fourth and two in overtime. They're still reviewing this last play. Did Johnson's knee hit the ground? And they've just told us the decision on the field stands. So fourth and two upcoming for the Broncos. Let's see if they can answer again. See right there. Ball is still in his hand. Now as he's going down, it's an excellent call. Coach Alvarez had spotted it. Against San Jose State, they needed a two-point conversion to get it done in a touchdown. They used Jared Zabransky using his legs, sprinting to the corner with a run pass option, and he delivered the pass. And Ian Johnson out of the game. Catching balls is not his forte. Vinny Perretta is a converted wide receiver in the backfield. And he's behind center, and the quarterback, Zabransky, is in motion. They do this a lot. Perretta to take the snap. He's going to throw it to the end zone. Touchdown! They're going to go for two, guys. I'm telling you, they are tired. To Listen, when you're Cinderella, at a certain point, you don't keep slugging with the big guy. They're going to try and win the football game right now. That's you, what I'm telling you. Yep. Well, you know Oklahoma will spend a timeout. This is the touchdown. Well, you talk about guts as a play I'm caller. Telling you. Run pass option. Well, is Vinny Peretta doing it this time? Well, you see Peretta. That's my. I'm, I'm thinking as a defensive player, I see Peretta there. What's he done? Well, here we go, fellas. What are you going to do now? Going for the win. Zabransky, flood right. Ball's near the left half. Get a flood right. I'm going to get a timeout by Oklahoma. All right, now do you change your mind if you're Chris Peterson and send out the extra point? He has a play he wants to call. He has the play. Oklahoma doesn't know what they're going to line up in offensively because they're going to shift anyhow. They showed that they have three wides, but where were they going to end up? They're going to give you some type of shift. They have the play call. That, well, that, was, almost bas that was almost basketball where you show something, call timeout because you've seen something, and you come back with something different. Fellas, you know what everybody across the country that's watching right now is saying? It's calls like this, it's effort like this, guts like this, which screams for a playoff in Division I-A football. Why not give Boise State the shot at Ohio State, the shot at Florida. This game tonight will further the cries of the underdogs of the world wanting a national championship playoff format. And you know something else, Tom? The counter to that would be the president saying, is this one outstanding football game or not? What more do we need? Well, it, they're also presidents of Division I AA schools. And Division Two and Division Three. Hey, Those not, presidents I, vote to I, have a playoff. I'm not arguing that point, but they're not going to this game. Had their shot at Oklahoma, <laughs> and they're giving them a heck of a shot. Guys, I still they don't think need to worry about anything else right now. Let's take a look at this. Zabransky, I still think him with some type of run pass option going to the right. Boise State for the win. They hand it off to Johnson. Boise State has won the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Can okay. you believe it?
doesn't get much better than that. <laughs> they run on a Statue of Liberty play. Earlier in the season, they ran that look, and they threw a quick screen out of that formation. And this was the counter to it. They knew it was on tape. Oklahoma seen it. They threw it out there to Nene. And this time, they fake it and hand it off the old Statue of Liberty. And no one better than Ian Johnson with the year he's had. Now, that football was supposed to go in the trophy case, but someone else has got it now. <laughs> yeah, Charles, let, let's go back to coaching here. They, he knows that Oklahoma has studied every film they have. That's it. They know every two-point conversion. They're going to defend. Bobby Stoops' team's coached well enough. They're going to defend what they saw. They come back with the counter. He knew it was on tape, and they threw the counter at them. But the number one thing, and we talked about it in the break, and I said it to you, Tom, they would go for two there, wouldn't they? Let's go downstairs right. to Chris Myers. We, we're just getting a hug. Zabransky from the opposing quarterback, Paul Thompson from the Sooners. Congratulations on one of the greatest college football games we've ever seen. Oh, it's unbelievable. You know, these guys just kept believing and kept believing, and that shows where they got it. We got it right here. We just kept battling from that last play of regulation all the way to that play. It's unbelievable. Biggest win in the history of Boise State football. What about that final play, the fake, without hesitation to go for two? I mean, we wanted, we wanted to come out here and win. We weren't going to hold anything back. We've been practicing that play, you know, all season long. We put that in. Actually, our backup quarterback put that extra fake in. And it was just, when it worked out, we ran it against Idaho, and it was good. And we just held on to it until now. You threw an interception that looked like it would cost you the game. Did that cross your mind? How did you get over that? Well, you know what? It's not over until it's 0 0 0. And I knew that. And the guys came up to me and they said they believed in me. That's all I needed. Perfect season. Do you deserve a shot at Ohio State? I think we do. I think you got to look at it. You know, we go 13 0. We beat everybody on our schedule. You know, the media talked about oh, Oklahoma being such a great team. And they battled. But we let them come back into it. And you know what? We deserve. We deserve a chance at a national title. All right, here's your congratulations. Thank you. Jared Zabransky. All, all the chips are on the table. The Tostitos Fiesta Bowl champions, Tom. Uh, the people of Idaho, the school, the other mid-majors, non-BCS conferences celebrate tonight. <laughs> Direct TV postgame coming up. And welcome to the Direct TV postgame show. What an unbelievable game. Uh, Coach, you said you're not sure you've ever seen a more exciting <laughs> college football game. And you said it earlier. What about the great calls, the gutty calls, and the execution down the stretch by Boise State? We'll talk more about that in a moment. Let's go back downstairs okay. to Chris Myers. Oh. We'll get to that. All right, I'm with uh, Ian Johnson in the corner with some Boise fans. Congratulations. Talk about the game and the finish. I mean, it was just one of those things where we wanted to be out here. We played real hard to get here. And then once we got here, we wanted to come out here, show them that they're in a game with us, and show them that we deserved a little bit of respect. We came out there, we had a little bit of fumbles, but we wanted to show them how we play ball, and we showed them. And then, I mean, it came down to who had the more heart, and we had it. And you, you didn't waver at, even after the interception run back when Jabranski and you were down. I mean, if you look on the sideline, our guys started smiling afterwards. Now, do you deserve a shot at Ohio State having a perfect record? I mean, we're not going to say that because hey, we got our bowl game. We were happy with our bowl game. Woo! And it worked. I mean, we won our game. We're 13-0. We deserve a little bit more respect. We're just out here to win a game, get a little bit of respect. Do you think Oklahoma took you, you lightly? We know they did. We, really? the, way, the way they were talking about us the whole entire game, the way they were talking to us when they were down, I mean, the whole entire week, we felt like they were, we were their little brothers. How about that final play, the gutsiness to go for two? I mean, we just felt amazing that our coach had enough confidence in us to go for two, to win this game, because we were playing to win, not to lose. All right, I know you're going to propose to your girlfriend. Congratulations. Hey. Oh, hold on. Wait a minute. Tommy, he's going to really do this. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Tommy, uh, she said yes. Ian Johnson proposing to the head cheerleader at Boise State. Does it get any better than this in college football? I don't have anything else left to say. Undefeated season and a proposal on the field after you win it in OT. First in wins and apparently first in love. <laughs> Boys, it's
Hey, don't never doubt the heart of a winner. Don't never doubt the heart of a winner, baby. Boise State, champions of the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl in overtime, 43-42 the final. Our direct TV postgame coverage continues. Let's go downstairs to Chris Rose. All right, thank you very much. It is time right now for the award ceremony, and for that we bring in the chairman of the Tostitos Bowl, Ellie Ziegler, and also from Frito-Lay, the senior vice president of sales, Randy Melville. Ellie, let's start it off with you on a great, great evening. Thank you so much, Chris. It is my honor to present the 36th annual Tostitos Fiesta Bowl Game Trophy on behalf of our board of directors and our 2,600 volunteers to head coach Chris Peterson and the Western Athletic Conference champions, the Boise State Broncos. Congratulations on your tremendous victory. Randy, do the honor. Coach. On behalf of the 18,000 plus Frito Lake frontline employees, I want to wish you and your team an outstanding victory. Way to go, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. this one here is for the Bronco Nation right here. Coach, do, do you feel like you shocked the world tonight? I tell you what, our guys fight and claw and scratch, and they play as hard as anybody in the country. And when you do that, you know you always got a chance. All the credit goes to these Warriors out here. Let's be honest, though. I don't think there's any more pages in that playbook. I mean, that last one that forced overtime, where did you come up with that? Well, I got to tell you this. The two backup QBs are the ones been calling for it all game long. And so the credit, there's a lot of credit that goes in a lot, of, a lot of places. And it starts with Taylor Tharp and Bush Handum as much as anybody for calling that play right there. Coach, obviously it means the world to Boise State and to the Western Athletic Conference, but what does this mean to all of the mid-majors, if you will, out there? Well, you know, we're just so happy that the BCS people tweaked the system to give us a shot to get here. Because when you get here, you never know what can happen, like tonight. Coach, you're not necessarily stronger or faster. You're just better. And you're also the 2007 Tostitos Fiesta Bowl champions. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you very much. Tom Brenneman, take it away, buddy. Chris, thank you. Perhaps does it tell you about the very spirit of Idaho and Boise State, crediting backup quarterbacks for the call that send you to OT. Congratulations, Chris Peterson and Boise State.